part two of growing dahlias from seed to harvest. In part one, I showed you how I planted the seedlings in peat pots as recommended by botanical interests on the back of the seed packet. But I realized shortly after doing this, I actually don't like this idea because I discovered a peat pot in my garden that had been sitting for at least a whole year and had yet to be disintegrated. This pot is not meshing with its surrounding soil very well at all and is popping out of the ground. And this hollyhock, which I know is really stunted and small, was planted in a peat pot three years ago. And you can still see pieces of that pot, although the roots now seem to be well established. So back to the dahlias. Before planting in the ground, I removed that peat pot, dug a hole, then placed the seedling into a mix of rich organic compost and my native soil. Dahlias are a tender perennial flower that originated in Mexico and Central America. They prefer soil that is rich and well-drained, consistently wet, although they can handle some dry periods, but never prefer the soil to be soggy. I installed a drip watering system that watered for 30 minutes every two days, but this was adjusted as needed when the weather changed. I watered more often when we had scorching temps and the leaves looked like this. Dahlias need full sun, but afternoon shade on hot summer days would actually help to prolong blooms. Now that I'm seeing this video, it kind of seems silly that I let all these other flowers encroach in on the dahlias space, but I was kind of going for that wildflower field look and I think they were still able to get enough sun. As my seedlings grew, I found that the plants had varied drastically in size. I wasn't sure if this was due to varying degrees of root disturbance, nutrient uptake, or sun exposure, but they eventually matured to be around the same height. These dahlias mature around three to four feet tall, and it is recommended that you top or pinch them, as gardeners say, above the fourth true leaf. These are all true leaves, while this is not a true leaf. It's the very first leaf of the plant, which is also known as the cotyledon. So we'd count one, two, three, four, or five, then cut. When you top the plant, you are essentially telling it to stop sending energy to that center growth and to start sending it to those side laterals, which in turn means more stems, more flowers, and a rounder, fuller bush. Now with this one, I was a little confused. You can see these two offshoots only have one stem each and do not fork into three stems like this one. So if I were to harvest these two flowers, I don't think I'd get any more because I'm not sure where they would grow from. It's possible that I cut too low or in the wrong spot. After germination, you should start to see buds form around the four month mark. This is the same buds growth over the span of 10 days. Maybe that's fast, maybe that's slow, I don't know. But the larger buds gave a sneak peek of colors that were to come and I thought that was fun. This is a picture of an actual cactus flower. You can see how these dahlias get their name. Yet I've noticed that when you Google cactus flowered varieties, they usually have much more spindly petals, which I did also see while growing these dahlias. These were all my peachy colored flowers, and the yellow in the center really makes them look like they're glowing. This one was my favorite because of the red brush stroking that was lightly visible on the front, but mostly visible on the back. These were all the pink shades I got, and I just could not believe how beautifully stunning this flower was. I loved how the colors faded from that white in the center to a darker pink on the outermost petals. It reminded me of a water lily. The color I preferred the least out of this bunch was this magenta shade and it was the color I actually got the most blooms from. Although they weren't my favorite, I still thought they were really pretty and the bees absolutely loved them. And finally, this is the craziest looking one I had. I call it my wild neon flower and I thought it looked pretty cool. My only issue with dahlias is how badly mine drooped. I tried to Google a solution and it seems like it just is something that's common with dahlias, but it's pointless to have a flower when you can't see its face properly. So you may have to help prop it up within the vase or use wire for arrangements. If you want your dahlias to have energy to keep putting out blooms, it's best to chop off any pollinated flowers that are beginning to die because it takes a lot of energy on the plant's part to create seeds. I'm kind of a seed freak and love to collect seeds, so I did let some die all the way back after being pollinated and waited until it was super dry, crunchy, and brown. These are the seeds. The other stuff is called chaff. The chaff, or the useless bits, are very light and can be easily blown away, which makes it easier to separate the parts that you want from what you don't want. 
I store my seeds in these custom seed envelopes, which my mom made for me. She does have her own little Etsy shop, so if you wanna make your own custom seed packets, I'll leave the link below. As the end of the season approached, disease started to overcome my plants. This may have been my fault because I did neglect to fertilize them, but it could have also just been their time. According to the seed packet, you should use a liquid fertilizer that is low in nitrogen because excess nitrogen can actually make the plants become leggy and more susceptible to pests and disease. Either way, next time I will be more consistent applying liquid fertilizer. Winter was right around the corner at this time and I knew I had to pull up my dahlias. If you live in zone six and cooler, you will need to pull them up if you would like to keep them for next season. The seed packet recommends that you gently lift the tubers after the tops have been killed off by frost. Then cut back the tops to be just two inches high, dust off as much soil as possible, and cure tubers in a room temperature area out of direct light and with good air circulation. Then store tubers in a cool, dark area like a basement over the winter in slightly damp, not wet, peat moss or vermiculite. I did not do any of this since I didn't really look into how to store them. I can kind of be a lazy gardener sometimes, but I just call it experimenting if it doesn't work out. After uprooting, I washed them off and immediately stored them in a paper bag in my garage where it's around 40 degrees. I'm not super desperate to keep these tubers because I could always grow more, but I wanted to try to save them if I could. It's good to continually check on your tubers after storing them. You can see there are a couple tubers that are beginning to shrivel a bit. This is due to potentially being overly dry, so from here on I will mist them and then store them within a mix of damp peat moss and vermiculite as recommended on the seed packet. I harvested some flowers to do a vase life test, but unfortunately I didn't harvest them as soon as I could have. For the longest vase life, harvest around this stage when two to three layers of the petals have opened. These were all cut when they were fully open, so they didn't didn't last as long as they could have. Here's what they looked like on day one in the vase with just plain water. This was day two and already we have some dropped petals, but the blooms are still looking really pretty. On day four, the more spindly looking blooms have some petal decay while the others still look pretty fresh. I think I would have kept the fresher looking ones maybe for a couple more days than tossed. I wish I had got some footage for days five through seven, but it was my son's second birthday and I didn't. This is what they looked like on day eight. So yeah, they would have lasted longer if I harvested sooner. So growing these tubers from seed for the first time was definitely a high point of the 2023 growing season for me. I just find it so incredible that you can plant this little seed and in turn with a little care receive such a vast array of beautiful flowers. If you would like to grow these yourself, you can check out the links below, which include the seeds and everything you need to grow them. Thank you to my most recent subscribers. I hope you have a blessed day and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha.